Hello, my name is Christine Granados, and I'm going to read part of a short story I wrote titled The Bride. The story is featured in the anthology Literary El Paso, and it was first published in the book Brides and Sinners in El Chuco. The Bride. When the month of June rolls around, I have to buy the five pound bride magazine off the rack at the grocery store. The photographs of white dresses, articles with to-do lists, and advertisements for wedding planners remind me of my older sister Rochelle's wedding. She had been planning for her special day as far back as I can remember. And every year when she was a child, Rochelle dressed as a beautiful blushing bride for Halloween. She sauntered her way down the hot, dusty streets of El Paso, accepting candy from our neighbors in her drawstring handbag. The white satin against Rochelle's olive skin made her look so pretty that I didn't mind the fact that we had to stop every three houses so she could empty the candy from her dainty bag into the ripped brown paper sack that I used for the journey. She had to drag me along with her, a reluctant Casper, because Mom made her and because I could hold all her candy. Her thick black hair was braided and she wore the trenzas in an Eva Peron style moño. She spent hours in the bathroom with her friend Prissy, fixing her hair just right, only to cover her head with a white tulle veil. And as Rochelle did this, Mom would prepare my costume. Spent and uninspired after a long day at work, Mom would drape a sheet over me and cut out holes for eyes. It happened every year without fail. The fact that I couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to be for Halloween exasperated my already exhausted mother even more. In a matter of minutes, I would list bionic woman, wrestler, linebacker, fat man, all as potential get-ups before it was time to trick or treat. Ro, on the other hand, she had her bridal dress finished days in advance, and she'd wear it to school to show it off. And when people opened their doors to us, they would say, Ay, que bonita la novia, and your little brother, un fantasma tan scary. I'd have to clear things up at every house with, I'm not a boy. They would laugh and ask Rochelle if she had a husband, and she would giggle and give them a name. When Rochelle got too old for Halloween, she started getting serious about planning her own wedding. She bought bride magazines and drew up plans, leaving absolutely no detail unattended. When it finally did happen, it was nothing like she had expected. Rochelle was obsessed, and because all those ridiculous magazines never listed mariachis or dollar dances, she decided her wedding was going to have a string quartet. No bajo horns or anything, no dollar dance, and it was going to be in October. It was going to be a bland affair outside in a tent, like the weddings up north in the elegance of autumn that she'd read about in the thick, glossy pages of her magazines. I wasn't going to tell her. There is no elegance to autumn in El Paso. Autumn is either scramble a huevo on the hood of your car hot, or wind so strong the sand it blows stings your face and your arms. And in the magazine pictures, all the people were white, skinny, and rich. And all the women wore linen or silk slips that draped over their skeletal frames. And the men wore tuxedos or black suits and ties. She didn't take into account that in those pages, there was no Tia Trini, who we called Tini, because at five foot two, she weighed at least 300 pounds. That slip dress Rochelle wanted everyone to wear would be swallowed in Tini's cavernous flesh. And I never saw anyone resembling Tio Lacho who wore the burgundy tuxedo he got married in, two sizes too small, to every family wedding. The guests in the magazine weddings were polite and refined with their long stemmed wine glasses half full. No one ever got falling down drunk and picked a fight like Bilat. He would get so worked up, someone would have to knock him out with a bottle of El Presidente. And he was proud of the scars on his head too showing them off just before the big fight started. And Rochelle 
She wanted tall white boys with jaw bones that looked like they'd been chiseled from stone to be her groomsmen. Never mind the fact that we knew only one white boy and he had acne so bad his face was blue. <laughs>